Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you are doing good. So today we will start with the workflow session third. So in previous session we tried to understand workflow properties and few of the workflow activities. So we will continue with that and uh, we will try to understand remaining workflow activities. Okay, so let's navigate to the personal instance and continue with that. So in previous uh, video we understood approval activities. Till rollback to we discussed about uh, all the activities. So today we'll be continuing it with the condition activities. So in conditions you could see like uh, four core activities are there. So basically uh, conditions activity all the condition activities are somehow related to condition. So this is kind of understood. So if means we are having two condition yes and no. And like if condition is matching, what should happen? In which activity it should go? And if condition is not matching, what transition has to be done? So that we define into the if condition. So if you open this if condition, you can see here we are having, uh, first you can define the condition here. If this condition is matching, so for example, you are having uh, advanced condition also, you can define the script. And um, if I am submitting this, uh, you know, if uh, activity, how it looks, just uh, let me show you that. So it will look something like this. So it has two branch like yes and no. So if this condition is matching, yes, then what should happen we can define into the another activity and we can get we can connect that activity from case and if condition is not matching where it should go we can define into the no branch so this is you know if activity looks and it is conditional it is um, based on the condition we are having two branches okay so now let's talk about switch condition. So switch condition is also kind of uh, we are having case uh, in Java, right? So somehow like that. So we can define the switch condition. So it will uh, switch to that condition. So mainly uh, here we are having uh, workflow name and you can choose one condition. So, so whether you can here you are having variable and field. So you can take that variable and field and you can have variable that variable here. So if you are taking variable, you can have variable. So these variables are part of the catalog item. We define variables into the catalog item. So you can select any one of the, you know, uh, variables. Uh, so variables are mainly questions, right? So you can select any one of the variable. And if you want, uh, you can select the field. So mainly fields are configured on the table. So from here, you can select the particular uh, field. Okay. So like uh, on which uh, table you are configuring this um, workflow from there, you can able to see all the fields and you can able to select any one of them. So based on that, you can configure the switch activity. So let's see how switch activity looks. So I'm just selecting approval and I am giving switch activity test. So this is how switch activity looks. So in approval, we are having this many state states, right? So like uh, I had selected the approval um, field into that um, switch uh, activity so you can have like if not yet requested what should happen so you can take so we are having this many branches based on our field which we have selected so uh, not yet requested requested approved rejected so these are the states into the approval field so what should happen if it is requested so we can configure that into another activity and you can uh, you know join uh, this requested to that particular activity once it is approved what should happen it should go to end something like that uh, or it should create a task or something so that activity you have to define and you can connect this node to that particular activity 
so this is how you can define the switch condition okay so let's talk about wait for condition so wait for condition is mainly like uh, if approval is not approved uh, what should happen next so it is not approved for two days so it should be automatic automatically marked as approved so something something you know if i need to define the condition so till that condition it should wait so that we uh, think we can define here so what till what condition this another activity should wait so we can um, have that here into the condition so this will this will wait until and unless this condition matches and then it will go to the next activity so if you want i can just put it like wait for condition test and i can just create here you have to define the condition so you have to define the condition according to the, your requirement and once we are creating the use case for the workflow we'll try to use most of the uh, activities into our workflow so you will having you know more clarity on that so i am selecting company is something just for demo purpose i want to show you how this wait for condition looks so this is kind of wait for condition looks like this so it will wait for this condition and then it will move to the next scenario so i am putting this here it should wait and then it should go to this activity so something like that you can define in should be always you know and so i am just adding this node yes here no here okay so i'll delete this one i'll add to this and then i'll add to this switch or else no so it should go to end so just you know for demo purpose i'm doing that and let's talk about wait for wf event so wait for workflow event so it will wait until and unless workflow event will get triggered so here you have to specify the event so if you click here so you have to give that event name here so it will wait for that event to be triggered and then once event that event is triggered until and unless uh, this activity will ask this workflow to wait so this is mainly you know this will wait for workflow activity to be triggered what you define here what active uh, event you define here so this is wait for workflow event so these are the conditional uh, you know activities so we def we use uh, this activities so whenever we have to define some condition and based on that our next type activity should get done so we are done with the conditional conditions so let's talk about notification so we can create event and we can create the notification so we are having table separate table for creating the notification as well but we can uh, you know trigger the notification from workflow as well <coughs> sorry so if you have to create any notification through workflow you can use this notification activity uh, so it will create notification through workflow so in like how you are creating the notification from the simple native uh, view and we are having this uh, table for uh, for creating the notification somewhat similar to that <clears throat> you are having this uh, uh, form so here you have to provide the name and here you can provide the addresses to and uh, like the user you can add here you can add the group here and if you want you can define your script as well and then you can define the message uh, like body subject and message and you are having variables like requested for and uh, another variable so you can have this variables from the particular table which you have selected to create a workflow so this is how you can trigger the notification simply through workflow by using this notification activity and this one is for creating an event so you can create an event uh, directly from the workflow so you can use this create event activity so here you have to define the name and you have to provide the event details 
so like if you have created the event you can select that event here and in event um, <coughs> parameter you can pass the parameter here if this is for parameter 2 so whatever value you want to return as a parameter 2 you can pass it here and whatever value you want to return as a parameter 1 you can pass it here so if you want to use these parameters into the notification you can use it all right so this event will be generated from this workflow activity so mainly we can trigger the event uh, from business rule from any of the server side of scripting we do it from script include business rule ui action by using gs dot event queue right so same way you can trigger this event through workflow as well by using this create event activity okay so let's talk about this on call activities so this on call all the activities related to on call like on call escalation attempt uh, escalation communication log escalation end so all these activities like send notification set escalate response so all these activities we mainly used for on call uh, on call purpose so this is you know you can go one by one and you can see like just you have to provide the you know input uh, and um, all those details like uh, uh, escalation ids shift ids and all so we'll discuss about it later we mainly do not i mean when we have to create on call support activities and on call workflow so in that scenario we use all these activities so we'll talk about it later in our separate video so let's go and continue with service catalog so we are having a, a scriptable order guide so i hope you are aware about the order guide so in order guide what we do we can create you know a number of uh, multiple rapms in a sequence order through one of the order guide so same ways we are having this scriptable order guide here so what you can do you can provide the name of this activity and here you are having this guide specifications so by using this guide specification you can select the order guide so you are having option here like what all order guides are configured into your system you can see here so in this my personal instance only two order guide that is also by default out of box so order guide are created so we are able to see this too so you can select any one of the order guide which you want to use here so i'll be selecting new hire just for demo purpose and you can have the script here so like uh, and this will uh, on this particular workflow activities it will create like uh, our items and tasks based on this order guide okay so if you go here in order guide if you type order guide into the filter navigator so you can see the list of the order guide so you can see only two order guides are here created so if i go and you know submit uh, just order and submit a request from this order guide so it will not create only one rtm it will create rtm based on the uh, here we have selected uh, rule base right so based on the rule base so this uh, order guide um, included nine uh, catalog items if you could see and the positions are also defined here so it has standard laptop developer laptop all these catalogs items are added into this particular order guide into a specific order that is defined at this position like order has been defined here so if i go and um, submit a request through this order guide what will happen like seven items will be created as part of this order guide based on the catalog item which we have included so like whatever catalog, catalog items like if uh, all the catalog items uh, are there so it will create rtm like whatever we have defined if it is record producer we can define the particular table so based on our catalog item it will create the ticket it will create the particular ticket whether rtm or any other uh, record so it will create it can create different we'll talk about order guide into our different videos so same you can use like you can select the order guide and if you want you can do the scripting here we'll be seeing you know few uh, scripting into 
our coming session so here you can select the order guide and it will create you know multiple or a number of hard items or another ticket based on like what we have defined into this order guide okay so i hope it is clear so let's talk about subflows so subflows is mainly when we have to launch you know another workflow so if i want to call after this activity another workflow like we are having maybe a lot of workflows uh, for example this workflow i want to call so what i can do is i can go and i can use this uh, flow launcher activity and i can call another workflow altogether here so for that you have to use this workflow coordinator configuration and we can select the workflow which you want to call here so if you go you can select <clears throat> any of the workflow which you want to call so let's select this one and you can have a script also so this is advantage of having workflow you can make it dynamic and you can have a lot of functionalities implemented by using workflow so this is how you can launch or you can trigger another workflow so now let's talk about task activities so we are having you know this three activities under task attachment note catalog task and create task so by using create task it is quite simple to understand you can create a task so what you have to do just you have to take a name and your task table and task type i mean task type this task table is automatically selected here you can if you want you can select any other table as well and here you can have you know priority and if you want you can populate the task variable as well here so you can a populate fulfillment group assign to sort description like whatever fields you want to map to the task and you want to populate into the task you can have it here you can have a schedule you can have a script as well so by using this create task activity you can create a task and you can populate the fields into the task as well so let's talk about catalog task now so catalog task also you know we use for creating a catalog task so like the difference between create task and catalog task is this table sc underscore task is the table where catalog tasks are created and being stored so this table will be set as read only here by default so like if you give the name of this activity and you cannot have you know permission to do this task so here it will create a catalog task um, by using this uh, activity so again you can set the everything is same so you can set the priority and other fields you can have a script as well a schedule all those details so almost everything is same and you can select uh, like here you can select the variables so most of the things are same just the difference is here this task table is sc underscore task and it is read only not readable so from this activity only catalog task will be created and by using this create task activity you can create any kind of task an attachment note so this attachment note is used to you can add the attachment and you can add the node as well into the additional comments or work notes for a particular ticket so see so you can have a name and you can select the field so where you want to add a note for this particular um, if attachment is being added to the like uh, record so where you want to update the note so you have to select that with the additional comment or work notes and then you can have this attachment information like which attachment you want to uh, attach and att attachment data also you can define so this attachment will be attached to that particular uh, record and note will be added along with that okay so i think uh, we'll discuss timer and utilities into our next session uh, this uh, utilities is little bit uh, having lot of activities so it will take more time 
so let's discuss timer and utilities into next session thank you for watching